Welcome to Blend's Localization Leader Series, where we interview industry leaders who are paving the way for advances in localization through their work. In this episode, we're joined by AMD's Senior Digital Marketing Specialist, Natalie Duran. AMD is a global company that specializes in manufacturing semiconductor devices used in computer processing. I'm so excited today to have Natalie Duran with us, AMD's Senior Digital Marketing Specialist. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us, Natalie. Let's start off by just getting some background on you, your career path, and how you ended up where you are today. Thank you, Corinne. I'm very happy to be here and very honored. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, So my background, I went went to college in Colombia. And after I graduated, I moved to USA to study English as a second language. And then during this time, I became a Spanish teacher and a translator. And I did that for a couple of years. Yeah, and I just needed a more lucrative income. So I went back to school for video production. And then after school, Mm -hmm. I had an internship with uh, Cartoon Network. This at the time I was living in Atlanta. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. So then uh, that was my first approach to localization. And to be honest, at the time, that wasn't even called localization. But I know we were doing localization now because we were working on program launches for Latin America. We're working with Argentina, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia. So that, you know, it wasn't called localization at the time, but that's that's what we were doing. And then after that, I became a production assistant for TNT. And, so, and they had the license, they have the license for all the award shows in Latin America, like the Academy Awards, the Grammys, the Emmys. So I had the opportunity to work as an assistant, a production assistant with very uh, good talent, excellent talent in the in the world of voiceover. And that was kind of like my initiation to work in the dubbing and subtitling world. And then after that, I moved to LA and I became a project manager for a dubbing and subtitling studio, smaller studio. And I worked on that for about seven years and after that yeah so then after that i decided to expand my career in localization and i decided to join the digital marketing world and so amd a company that i work for now the localization team was looking for a producer with a background in video production and that was a good match because that was my background and i wanted to continue working with languages and cultures but i wanted to transition into the tech industry so that, that's that's how it was. And so now I am an AMD. Wow, it's super cool how you jumped from entertainment to AMD. It's like two different worlds, but able to uh, blend them as well. Um, awesome. So let's hear a little bit more about uh, AMD, how localization um, plays a role there. Um, so tell me a little bit more about that. Mm-hmm. So at AMD, we have a centralized localization process and our localization team is the point of contact for all marketing localization requests. So we cover all of the products and everything that launches at AMD and it's really exciting. Uh, but we have, you know, we have dedicated localization producers for each of our business units and they are aligned with the different areas of the business. So this is a good strategy because we are getting really involved in the product planning process. So we are are roadmapping our teams, uh, go through everything that is coming up at AMD, and we make sure that we connect with those teams. And if we don't have those relationships yet, then we are always building those relationships and making sure that we are covering everything that's coming up and being really proactive about it. So, yeah, that's that's our structure. Awesome. Is that what you would say is uh, AMD's strength in localization or is there something else that you feel like is AMD's like, greatest localization strength? I think that our localization team is the greatest strength <laughs> <laughs> because we are all subject matter experts. You know, we ensure that we tailor 
our content to address the local needs, the concerns and the interest. And we understand the brand and we understand and care about the specific challenges and the aspirations that our audiences uh, have. So I think this is very relevant because then we build trust and we build credibility and we make our brand feel more relatable, you know? So yes, and my colleagues, they're all, I have um, colleagues from Japan, from Korea, from the Ukraine, from Mexico, from Germany, from Italy. So it's like the United wow. Nations. Wow. Yeah. Are you guys working uh, remotely, like from all different locations? We are. We are working remotely. We do have face-to-face -face meetings and, you know, we, we try to meet, you know, I just recently moved to Austin and I'm going to be able to meet them more often. But yes, we are in different locations, but we do have constant meetings and we're constantly seeing each other on camera. Yeah. Yeah, I think just the nature of uh, the localization industry tends to be like that way that because everyone's from all over. Yeah. We are especially, uh, you know, we, we were doing we were, the remote work as a thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Very cool. Um, so like you said before, a while back, the localization industry didn't even have a name. Um, but today the importance of localization is becoming more and more recognized, but still it can be challenging for localization employees to gain budget and resources. Do you have any tips for localization managers that are looking to demonstrate the value of localization? Yes, I think that you first you have to identify the key stakeholders and understand their priorities and their concerns, right? Because different stakeholders might be interested in different aspects of the localization. Some of them are interested in the revenue growth. Some of them are, you know, interested in brand consistency or, you know, customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I think that first you identify that and then you have to provide concrete data. And how do you do that? Well, you know, with the statistics and asset uh, utilization, right? So that you can highlight the potential benefits of the localization of a product in a specific region. Right. But um, also, I think that you should include metrics so that you can show, you know, increased revenue to your uh, stakeholders and how the, the customer engagement has improved. Also, you know, if there are more like uh, conversion, higher conversion rates. I also think that, you know, if, if you reduce the customer support request and that's another good sign that mm -hmm. you're doing well in the localization, especially for e-learning materials. So, yeah, I think that, you know, if you use case studies and examples uh, from, you know, from from your projects to prove the the stakeholders you know that that there's there's possibility of increasing um the localization in one specific market i think that's that's a that that will add value value to your team I, absolutely the, yeah keeping their interest in mind yeah and i also think it's important to use case studies from other localization um uh, from other localization right. industries, you know, and also show like, you know, successful localization outcomes and so that you can learn from other companies as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do it in every other area. So why not uh, in localization? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so from your experience in the industry, what piece of advice do you have for other localization professionals or perhaps someone who is new and wants to enter the, the industry? Do you have any like piece of advice you would share? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I think that you have to have a holistic understanding of language and culture, right? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you can, you can have a high level of proficiency in one foreign language if, if you can, you know, like if, if it's possible, I think that it, it really, really helps if you have one foreign language that you know very well besides English. And right. I also think that, you know, like if you develop your cultural sensitivity, 
by you know immersing yourself in like different cultures and reading foreign literature and watching foreign films and interacting with people from diverse backgrounds. I think that also helps a lot in the world of localization. And at a more technical level, I think that, you know, if you familiarize yourself with the industry localization tools, you know, like the CAD tools, computer assistant, yeah. uh, translation, translation management systems, um, also content management systems. So if you, you know, if you, are uh, constantly uh, familiarizing yourself with these tools and learning these tools that will also enhance your productivity. And also, I think that attending industry conferences is important because then, then you connect with other peers and other professionals. And I think that working in all is always valuable and it always yeah. leads to job opportunities and collaborations. Yeah. That was really great advice. Um, I think everything you said is just like really important to keep in mind, not just thinking about having the passion for culture, having the passion for language, also looking at, um, you know, being on top of all the technologies that are coming out and, and networking. It's great. Um, so before we wrap things up, we can do our quick uh, rapid fire questions. Um, so you can say just a quick answer and uh, no need to elaborate if you don't want to. So let's start. What is your favorite language? Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Um, and your favorite localization tool? Hmm. I think that in CAD tools, any computer assisted translation. Yeah. Right. And and best place you've ever traveled to? Tbilisi, Georgia. Wow, cool. Awesome. And uh I've never been. What's the best localization advice you've received? Hmm. To stay up to date with the industry trends and all the mm -hmm. emerging emerging technologies, you know, especially AI, everybody's yes. talking about AI, but I think, you know, and also to remain competitive and relevant so mm -hmm. that you know, your help is always needed. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what would you say is your localization nightmare? Hmm. Uh, last, last minute changes of the source. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You know, it's like, I'm just changing one word. And that one word will impact 18 languages and hundreds <laughs> of assets, right? So, yeah, I think yeah. that this minute changes of source of one word. Mm, yeah. That's yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. Who is your localization role model? Mm. I really like Natalie Kelly from mm -hmm. the blog Born to be Global. Yes. Uh, yeah, because she's a marketer. She's a marketer at heart, but she is also an expert in localization and international Absolutely. strategy. So I think that combination makes her a subject matter expert. And she just contributes like really uh, specialized knowledge to help organizations to make informed decisions and to solve problems in localization. So I always, I'm always reading her, her blog. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I also love her content and I know she just came up with a book. So mm -hmm. very cool. Um, yeah. Great. So the last question which brand is your localization crush? So it can be any any company whose localization you admire. Spotify. Yeah. Mm. I really uh, think, you know, I, uh, I travel to Colombia a lot. And when I'm in Colombia, uh, I love their interface there. And, you know, I love how they their multilingual interface is curated for the regions. So, you know, like, for example, I, I go to Colombia and then I will have curated playlists, album titles, artist names, and style. It's like I can see that it's been localized for Colombians. Uh, when I'm in America, it's, it's cool. a completely different experience. And I really admire that about them. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. 
Okay, wow. Thank you so much, Natalie, for joining us. It was really so nice to speak with you and hear all your wisdom. Um, and yeah, I hope we can talk again soon sometime. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Corinne, for your time, for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you.